Welcome to this week's episode of Pets and Rent. My name is Rudy Ohms and I will be your host again for this week's episode. Well, looking back in the last couple of episodes, I showed you some of the troubleshooting tools we use, such as Fiddler to capture HTTP traffic from the engine service. And I showed you the SyncML tool I use when I need to debug some policies that are not coming down from the service. Besides those tools, I also talked about another tool I regularly use. That's the IDA tool. That tool can be used to look at some native Windows binaries, such as the BitLocker AP DLL file, or some enrollment DLLs that Windows uses to enroll in Intune. But besides just looking at those DLL files, I showed you how we can figure out what Microsoft futures are coming or what Microsoft is working on just by searching for a real future ID and that's it. And within a couple of minutes, we will exactly know what's coming, which is pretty cool if you ask me. But before we continue, did you already knew that somehow Microsoft fixed something in the background? Because it seems that in the latest May, Windows update, they quietly fixed the issue where some Windows reboot update notifications weren't showing up. So after your device got updated, the whole Toast notification that you needed to reboot your device wasn't showing. Where did people weren't going to reboot the device, they just let, left, let it on. Well, it seems Microsoft is going to fix it, or has fixed it right now, with the May update. But there was no blog post, no changelog entry, just nothing. So if you heard something, please let me know. Otherwise, I guess I need to dig into some DLL files next time to figure out what they changed and how they fixed it. But well, let's move on to this week's topics then, because again, uh, in one of our latest blogs we released, uh, we discussed how a hidden uh, limit of maximum 256 apps targeted at all devices could potentially break autopilot device preparation. In that blog, we showed you some parts of the APDP code that lives in the engine management extension. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this session. Using the .peak tool to dig into the actual engine management extension, the IMEA code, aka the sidecar agent, and trace down the problem to the source. And now you're probably wondering why not using the IDA tool? Why the .peak tool? Well, IDA is a great tool for native Windows binaries, just as I was just explaining. But it doesn't help when you need to deal with some autopilot device preparation issues. Because if we want to look at the APDP code, autopilot device preparation, APV2, how you want to call it, we need to look at the engine management extension. And most of the engine management, well, everything in the engine management extension is .NET based. That means we need to use a different tool. The .peak tool, what is a .peak tool? Well, it's a little bit the same as the IDA tool. It's, well, not exactly because it's free. So it's a free .NET compiler from JetBrains, which actually can do almost the same thing as the IDA tool. It lets you open the DLL file, in this case, in .NET assembly, and you can expect the actual C code or the C++ logic behind it. It's, again, looks a bit like PowerShell, if you ask me, but then again, I think that everything looks like PowerShell. So, well, reading it is pretty easy. You can view the method names, class structures. You can even switch to the IL language, but doing that makes it way harder to read. So I will just stick with the regular view. And of course, besides installing uh, .peak yourself, you can also just download the portable version of it, which means you don't need to install it. Which makes it pretty easy if you want to debug something on the fly. So we'll we use it today to dig into some uh, autopilot device preparation files and how those APDP, the engine management exchange files, handles the app workload logic and where it stops processing. When it goes sideways, I will show you everything you need to know how to use a .peak tool. So, well, let's move on to the demo then. Well, I already ensured that I installed .peak uh, on this test device because it's my test device and all the other tools I use are also on the same device. Of course, you can just do it yourself, download it from the JetBrains website, either as a regular install or the portable versions, as mentioned earlier. And 
Also, a quick note, this device isn't enrolled into Intune. So if I want to take a close look at some Intune management extension files, I need to copy them over from a working device or an enrolled device. So I did the same thing. I just ensured that I copied over to the two DL files that were responsible for the autopilot device preparation enrollment. So if you open up the Intune management extension folder, aka the sidecar folder on the device, I notice that it only contains or only requires two DLL files, the bootstrapper DLL, agent core DLL file and the device preparation DLL file. Well, I guess it's all in the name, right? So I ensure that I already opened uh, the DLL file on my device. Otherwise, I need to look of load all the symbols, and that could also take a while. So looking back at the issue with IAPDP, we noticed that uh, looking at the event logs, looking at the entry management extension log, it was pretty clear that during the enrollment, the SLDM provider phase timed out, canceled with a nice error code, which refers to a timeout. So we knew where we needed to start looking, the SLDM provider, because that was the last thing mentioned, that was the provider or the phase that was timing out. So as you see here in my screen, it's pretty easy. We opened the .pick tool, and we just went through all the providers. And within a couple of seconds, we noticed that the bootstrap agent provider, provider SLDM provider, was there. And while opening that code, we noticed a total flow in it. I guess before I continue, I need to do a small summary of what the SLDM provider is about. Well, I already mentioned in the blog we posted last week, but the SLDM uh, provider function monitors the provisioning state. It handles the reboot, the co-escalated reboots that needs to happen. And of course, it I, and that's the most important part, it reads the workload state from the CSP. So Intune will send down the CSP, the progress CSP, to the device mentioning which workload states, well, which batch it needs to proceed. So the first thing um, APDP will do is uh, trying to get rid of the additional local administrators on the device. Once it's done that, it moves to the SLDM provider, well, uh, the main provider in the autopilot device prepar preparation enrollment. So looking at that code, it's very easy. As mentioned before, it, it looks like PowerShell. So opening this DLL file and just scrolling down showed me exactly what was going on within a couple of minutes. I noticed that the execute async was looping constantly, trying to perform the same steps over and over again. And as I was mentioning before, the SLDM provider is responsible for the workloads. And of course, it will know how to do so by looking at the CSP it got from Intune. So update progress from CSP, it's in the name. So reading to this code is pretty easy, but still, it's just code. And as mentioned before in other sessions as well, it's always a combination of having multiple tools, of using multiple tools at the same time. So looking at this code, well, it doesn't, at least it couldn't tell you anything. But if you combine that tool with some event logs, which we did, so again, SLDM provided timed out. And while looking at the code, the first thing I was wondering, if the workload ID policy the progress CSP was sent to the device. Guess, guess what tool showed me that? The Fiddler tool, the SyncML tool, they clearly showed me that Intune was constantly sending out the progress CSP and it was only mentioning workload ID state one, which means in progress. Well, how do we know that? Looking at this code, just scrolling down to the code and reading it. And if you read the code and just read it, look at it, and within a couple of minutes, it became clear that if it needs to be uh, finished or move over to the next phase, the CSP needs to change to two, which means complete it. So we tried to enroll another device, and this time with some less apps, and having the SyncML tool open, it clearly shows us that workload state ID two was sent to the device. And from there on, the SLDM provider phase was completed and it moved over to the second phase. So again, it's always a combination of having multiple tools or use multiple tools at the same time. So having multiple tools 
available really helps when you need to troubleshoot some weird Intune issues. So in this small demo, I showed you how I was looking at the bootstrapper agent provider, the SLDM provider, and how just by looking at the code and com combining that information with the SyncML tool or the Fiddler tool, it really showed us what was going on. But of course, we don't only need it to take a close look at APDP as well, but because we can also use the .peak tool to look at other stuff from the Intune Management Extension, because the Intune Management Extension is also responsible to deliver your apps to your device, which we are pretty good at. But not only Winter 2 apps, but also PowerShell scripts. So every time something goes wrong with PowerShell or apps, or even device query, we need to use the .peak tool to look at a DLL file to find out what's happening and combine the information we got from the other tools. And from there on, the picture is almost complete, right? Maybe a couple more episodes left and then we can have the full picture, how we need to troubleshoot stuff. Well, at least the basic first steps. So I guess it's time to wrap up then. What's next? Well, I guess it's time to go back to Fiddler again because during one of the previous episodes of Patch Event, we discussed the basics of Fiddler, how to set it up and how to start capturing traffic. But if you want to step it up a notch and to use Fiddler during an internal moment, well, that's next level. So I will show you a capture I took during an internal moment and how we can use the Fiddler tool to find out what's really happening and why an internal moment is breaking. I guess it's pretty cool, but well, that's for you to decide. So keep an eye out for the next episode. Well, also one last more thing because during this episode, we have taken a close look at the .peak tool and how we use that .peak tool to debug an issue with autopilot divide preparation. Why we did that? Because one of our customers approached us with this issue, mentioning that somehow the apps weren't getting installed on this device. Well, one thing was for sure, because it wasn't a patch my PC issue. It was something that ha was happening at the Intune service. So it was, well, not Microsoft's its fault, but at least we couldn't do anything about it except finding out what was happening and communicating with the customer what was happening. And with that information, the customer can, could contact Microsoft. And of course, we did the same thing, but well, if you want that level of support, where we don't stop because it's not our problem, well, I think you need Plasma PC. So come over to our website and start looking at the products and please book a demo. Well, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.